50 Famous Fairy Tales, number 4. Hansel and Gretel. Once, long ago, a poor woodcutter lived at the edge of a large forest with his two children, a boy named Hansel and a girl named Gretel, and their stepmother. Now it happened that there was a great scarcity of food in the land, and the poor woodcutter could not get enough to feed his family. One evening, when Hansel and Gretel were in bed, the man sighed and said to his wife, What will become of us? How can we feed my children when we haven't anything to eat ourselves? There is only one thing to do, the stepmother answered. We shall lead them into the thickest part of the forest tomorrow, build them a fire, and give them each a small piece of bread. Then we shall leave them. They will not be able to find their way home again, and we shall be freed of them. No, wife, he replied. I could never do that. How could you be cruel enough to leave the children in the forest for the wild beasts to tear to pieces? But she said it was better to let them die suddenly than to watch them slowly starve to death, and she gave him no peace until he finally consented to leave Hansel and Gretel in the woods as she had suggested. However, the children had overheard all that was said, for they were so hungry that they had not been able to sleep. <clears throat> Gretel wept bitterly and said to Hansel, What will become of us? Don't cry, Gretel, he said. I shall take care of you. When their parents fell asleep, Hansel got up and slipped it out the back door. The moon shone brightly, and the white pebbles that lay on the path glittered like silver coins. He filled his pockets with them, and then, going back to Gretel, he said, Go to sleep, dear sister. God will not forsake us. Early the next morning, the wife called to the children. Get up, you lazy things. We are going into the forest to chop wood. She gave them each a piece of bread, saying, This is for your dinner. Do not eat it until noon. Gretel took the bread in her apron, for Hansel's pocket was full of pebbles. When they had gone a little distance, Hansel stood still and looked back at the ha back of the house. After he had repeated this several times, his father called back, Hansel, what are you looking at? And why do you lag behind? Why, father, said Hansel, I am looking at my white cat sitting on the roof of the house. He is trying to say goodbye. That is not a cat, said his stepmother. It is only the sun shining on the white chimney. Hansel had not been looking at the cat at all. Every time he stopped to look back, he had dropped a pebble out of his pocket. When they were deep in the forest, their father told the children to gather wood and build a fire. Then, as the flames burned high, the wife said, Now you children lie down close to the fire and rest yourselves. We are going to chop wood. When we are ready to go home, I shall come and fetch you. Hansel and Gretel sat down near the fire, and after a while they ate their bread. They could hear the blows of an axe, so they thought their father was near. However, it was not an axe, but a branch which he had bound to an old tree, being blown to and fro. The two children waited a long while, and, while, and at last they fell asleep. When they awakened, it was quite dark, and Gretel be, began to cry. How are we going to get out of the woods? Hansel comforted her by saying, Wait a little while until the moon comes up, then we shall quickly find the way. In a little while the moon came up. Hansel, taking his sister's hand, followed the pebbles which glittered like new coined silver pieces and showed them the path. All the night long they walked, and at daybreak they came to the father's house. They knocked at the door. When the stepmother opened it and saw Hansel and Gretel, she exclaimed, You wicked children! Why did you sleep for so long in the forest? We thought that you were never coming home. But their father was unhappy, but their father was happy to see them, for he had been sad at heart over leaving them. But the crops were no better than before, and the food was still scarce. Once more the stepmother nagged the woodcutter to take the children into the forest and leave them. The children overheard this conversation also, and as soon as the old pe older people were asleep, Hansel got up and ordered to go outside for some pebbles. But his stepmother had locked the door. Early the next morning the stepmother woke them and gave them a small slice of bread. On the way to the woods, Hansel crumbled his and st stopped every now and then to drop a crumb. Hansel, why do you stop and look about? asked his father. I am looking at my little dove, answered Hansel. He is nodding goodbye to me. That is no dove, said his stepmother. It is only the sun shining on the chimney. But Hansel kept dropping crumbs as he went along. The wife led the children to the deepest part of the woods, where, there had <clears throat> where they had never been before. Making an immense fire, she said to them, Sit here and rest a while, and if you feel tired, sleep a bit. We are going into the forest to chop wood. When it is time, we'll come and fetch you. After they had eaten their bread, the two children went to sleep, and when they awoke, it was dark. Hansel comforted his sister by saying, Wait, Gretel, when the moon comes out, we'll be able to see the crumbs of bread that I dropped, and they will show us the way home. The moon sh soon shone bright, but the children could not see any crumbs, for the birds had picked, them up, had picked them all up. Hansel kept assuring Gretel that they would soon find their way, but they walked the whole night and the next day, and still they did not get out of the forest. They became very hungry, for they had nothing to eat but a few wild berries. 
Hansel and Gretel walked on and on, but they only got deeper and deeper into the forest. Suddenly, they saw a beautiful snow-white bird sitting on a bough. The bird was singing so sweetly that they soon stood, that they stood still and listened. When it spread its wings and flew off, the children followed till it, until it reached a cottage and perched upon the roof. As Hansel and Gretel drew near, they saw that the cottage was made of gingerbread, the roof of cakes, and the window panes were of sugar candy, so clear you could see through it. <clears throat> oh, 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 cried Hansel, what a glorious feast. I shall eat a piece of the roof, and you can eat some of the window. Reaching up, Hansel broke off a bit of the roof to see how it tasted, and Gretel began to nibble at the window. Then a voice called out, Tip tap, tip tap at my window, who doth rap? The children answered, Wind of the air breezes fair, and went right on eating. Suddenly the door opened, and a very old woman came out. Hansel and Gretel were so startled that they dropped what they had in their hands. The old woman said in a kindly voice, Ah, you dear children, what has brought you? What has brought you here? Come into the house and eat all you wish. Then she took them both by the hand and led them into her cottage. The old woman was very kind to them, but though her voice sounded gentle and her words were sweet, she was a really a wicked witch. She had built the gingerbread house to attract children so that she might kill and eat them. The next morning, before the children awakened, the old witch went back to look at them. Seeing their chubby red cheeks, she mumbled to herself, That will be a good bite. She took Hansel and shut him up in the little cage with a lattice door. And although he screamed loudly, it was of no use. Then she shook Gretel until she awakened and said, Get up, you lazy thing, and fetch some water to cook something for your brother, who must remain in that cage and get fat. When he is fat enough, I shall eat him. Gretel began to cry, <clears throat> but it was no use, for the, for the old witch made her, uh, made her do as she wished. So a nice meal was cooked for Hansel, and Gretel got nothing but an old crab claw. Every morning the old witch went to the cage and said, Hansel, stretch out your fingers so that I might see if you are or if you're getting fat. Each time, clever Hansel stretched out a bone instead. The old witch, whose sight was very bad, thought that it was his finger and wondered why he did not get fat. When four weeks had passed and Hansel still seemed quite lean, she lost all her patience and could wait no longer. In a fit of temper, she called out, Gretel, get the oven heated this morning. I shall cook Hansel fat or lean. When <clears throat> there was nothing for Gretel to do but make, a f but make a fire to heat the oven. When the witch thought the oven should be hot enough, she pushed Gretel up to it and said, Creep in and see if it is hot enough. She intended to shut the door when Gretel got into the oven and so roast her too. Gretel guessed her thoughts and said, I don't know how to do it. How shall I get in? You stupid goose, said the witch. The opening is big enough. See, I could get in myself. And she got up and put in her head, or put her head in the oven. As soon as she did this, Gretel gave her a push so that the old witch fell right in. Then Gretel shut the iron door and fastened it tight. As soon as she found the witch's keys, she ran to the cage and called, Hansel, we are saved. The witch is in the oven. Hansel sprang out of the wooden door, or sprang out when the wooden door opened. Now that there was no one to fear, the children searched the witch's house and found chests full of pearls and precious stones in every corner. Hansel filled his pockets, and Gretel took as many as she could carry in her apron. Then she stared out as though she could. Then she stared out through the forest to find their way home again. Started out. When they had walked about two hours, they came to a lake. We cannot get over," said Hansel. "There is no bridge." There is no boat either, said Gretel, but there swims a white duck. I shall ask her to help us over. So she sang, Little duck, good little duck, Gretel and Hansel before you stand. There is neither boat nor bridge. Take us back to your land. <clears throat> the good duck came and took them to the other side. They did not walk much further before they saw their father's house at the edge of the forest. They began to run, and bursting into the house, they saw their father. They flung their arms about him, and he kissed them for joy at their return. The woodcutter had not had one happy minute since he left his children in the forest. The wicked, wicked stepmother was dead, and so, was, and so now he was free to love his own dear children again. I'm a poor man, but a happy one, he said. Then Gretel shook her apron, and the pearls and precious stones rolled on the floor, while Hansel drew one handful of gems after the other out of his pockets. The precious stones were worth a great deal of money, and Hansel and Gretel and their father never again wanted for anything else. The end.